Hello and welcome to Daily Current Affairs by Neo AIS. Today is 30th June 2019 and the topic we are going to discuss is Tri Netra System, Punch Mission, One Nation One Ration Card, Universal Immunization Program, Map Aided Program and the previous year question revision series. So coming to the first topic, Tri Netra System. So this is in news because the railways, they are conducting uh, trials of Tri Netra technology. Uh, but it cannot be introduced till it is found to be perfect in detecting any obstruction on the track. So this is being you. This is going to be used by railways on a foggy day, because if there is an obstruction in the in the railway track, that they cannot detect it. But if they use Trinetra technology, they can detect any obstructions on the fog. So uh, first they have to make trials. Enough trials. If it's working or not, they have to confirm it. That is what is happening now. That is why this is in news. So, Trinetra is, it is a um, collision avoidance system, it, be, it is being uh, made for Indian railways. So, the abbreviation is Tri means terrain imaging for diesel, D reverse, infrared enhanced on Tycle and radar assisted system, that is uh, uh, Trinetra, okay. So, Trinetra system, uh, it shall be uh, made of four, it has four components, one is high resolution optical video camera. Then high sensitivity infrared video camera, then radar based terrain mapping system is there and uh, so uh, see the three components. So these three components of the system, they shall act as three eyes that is why tri uh, netra, okay. It is uh, the uh, three eyes of the locomotive pilot, okay. So this is designed to see the terrain ahead of the, uh, the running locomotive during a, a, a inclement weather or a not a not so favorable weather. So they combine the images captured by all the subsystems and they will create a composite video image. So this will be displayed in front of loco pilot seat on a computer monitor. So this will enable the, the pilot to see the terrain even before the locomotive uh, reach that particular point. So the system, if uh, it once installed, it will help uh, in enhancing the vision of locomotive drivers. So they can uh, they can uh, drive in any weather conditions such as fog or heavy rains or even night time. So they have enough uh, you know time to pu push the brakes without hitting the objects or obstruction because there are been a lot of cases where the people are getting hit by the train because train uh, the loco pilot cannot see the person crossing the, the railway track or walking through the railway track this is a common thing these days. So we have to develop some sort of technology to avoid such uh, you know accidents. Okay. So the technology used here is uh, based on the technology which we used on the fighter aircraft. They, they used it in order to see through the clouds and they also operate in pitch darkness. So tri nether it acts as a third eye. It will also use the, the, the technology from the naval ships also. They, they are also using the Strinetra technology in order to you know map the, the ocean floor and also to navigate in night. So they will be using this in railways. Okay. So this, uh, this was developed, the, the concept was developed uh, by the development cell who is working under the railway board. Okay. So they, they developed uh, this um, thing, they adopted it from the Air Force and Navy uh, to deploy in Indian Airways. Okay. Next is Punch Mission. Punch Mission is in use because NASA, uh, they are, uh, um, they have selected Texas based Southwest Research Institute uh, to lead the Punch Mission. That is why this is in news. Okay. So, I will tell you what Punch Mission is. So, Punch Mission is basically, uh, it is a uh, mission to image the sun, to, to uh, image, to take photos of a sun. So, it will image the region uh, beyond the sun's outer corona. Okay. So, the punch, it stands for a polarometer, polarimeter uh, to unify the corona and heliosphere. Okay. So, this is uh, for mainly focused on understanding the transition of particles from sun's, uh, sun's outer corona to the solar wind. Okay, uh, that is what has been uh, filling the interplanetary space. So they will, uh, they will more uh, focus on the transition of particles from sun's outer corona to the uh, solar wind. Okay, that is what the punch mission do. So punch mission, it will uh, consist of a constellation. Uh, constellation means it has four microsats. It will form a constellation. 
so that will orbit the earth in for, in, a, in a particular formation and study the corona so uh, it is corona is the atmosphere of sun that you already know so it will connect the interplanetary mediums okay so the mission it will image and track the solar wind and also the coronal mass ejection you already already know coronal mass ejection right okay which are it it, it is basically uh, the the wind coming from the sun's atmosphere it is like blowing the wind from sun's atmosphere that is uh, uh, coronal mass ejection so this mission they'll take images of coronal mass ejection so it can the coronal mass ejection it can affect and drive space weather events near the earth's surface okay since the sun's corona it's much fainter than its surface layer it cannot be viewed by any instrument directly so punch will block out the light from sun to view its corona and its structure so it will be more visible if you use the uh, use the punch mission okay next is one nation one ration card so this is a news because the central government has given uh, one year to the states and UTs uh, for implementing this one uh, one uh, nation one ration card system they have to implement it it's not a voluntary function it is a binding provision okay so talking about the card uh, it is a scheme under which the beneficiaries they will be able to buy food grains in a subsidized price from a ration shop okay the peculiarity is they can buy ration from any ration shops in any part of the uh, any part of the country okay so the new uh, mechanism it will ensure that no poor is deprived of the public distribution system entitlement uh, if that person is shifting from one place to another so who will be benefited more it will be a migrant worker okay so the system it will also help to remove the, the fake ration card holders because yeah, you imagine the situation a uh, public distribution system is not well distributed throughout the countries some uh, uh, some states like kerala or uh, tamil nadu have a have a better system but some states like rajasthan or um, jharkhand have very poor system in uh, pds that's what i know okay so um, in such a situation uh, if you want to you know bet, make a better system in the pds you have to bring a common card for throughout the country so that if a person move from kerala uh, to tamil nadu or from jharkhand to chhattisgarh he should get the same entitlement in that place also because the migrant workers they they keep on migrating in search of a better opportunity or better living conditions so they should not be deprived of uh, uh, the uh, the food security or the pds system that is what is uh, uh, the main objective of uh, one uh, one nation one ration card so the the system the scheme will uh, allow pro portability of food security benefits that was uh, that's what i told you now so this will come into being by 2020 july 1st 2020 the poor migrant workers will be able to buy subsidized rice or wheat from any ration shop in the country as long as their ration cards are linked to other so what is mandatory here Aadhaar. Only if a person is, uh, you know, having an Aadhaar card, he can link the ration card to the Aadhaar card and be available uh, uh, available for this uh, particular scheme. Okay. So the migrant would only be eligible for subsidies supported by center. Okay. And it will include uh, the rice sold at uh, two uh, three rupees uh, per kg and wheat at two rupees per kg. So the the state government system won't work. It is one card and for entire country means. They will get subsidized uh, benefits which has been fixed by center. Okay. Even if a beneficiary moved to a state where grains were given for free, that person will not be able to access those benefits because it's not been controlled by the state exchequer. Okay. That is the whole point. Next is universal immunization program. Uh, this is in news because the diphtheria vaccine, uh, it is one of the oldest vaccine in uh, the system and um, it has been showing some remarkable reduction in 2015. So the country has been going up over the last few years after showing a remarkable reduction in 2015. So once it, it went down, again it is coming up. Okay, diphtheria, uh, it is a dangerous case actually, it's an infectious disease. It is being caused by cyanobacterium diphtheria. So that uh, this particular um, disease, uh, the bacterium, it affects the throat and upper airways 
and it will also produce a toxin that will affect the you know whole body okay so the illness it has an acute onset and the main characteristics are sore throat low fever swollen glands so swollen glands in the neck and the toxin it can also spread throughout the body so the disease is spread through uh, the direct physical contact or from breathing uh, of a infected individual okay so the immunization program is taking care of it it it, it was brought down in 2015 now it is again rising up okay so the immunization program if you check the background of this program it was introduced in 1978 it was a program expanded program of immunization by ministry of health uh, and family welfare so the first three vaccine which came under this program was bcg you might be very familiar it is against uh, tb diphtheria uh, pertussis tetanus and cholera so it was called as bcg vaccine that was the first three vaccine so in 1985 what happened was uh, the program was modified into universal immunization program uip so it will be uh, then decided that it will be uh, conducted or implemented in a phased ma manner all through the country so dp dpt continue to be a part of uh, the uip and which now it has 12 vaccines okay it is now in, uh, incorporated as a pentavalent vaccine then hepatitis b hemophilus influenza type b all these are in, uh, included right now so uip it aims at giving all the children born in uh, in india all this 12 vaccines for free okay so as per the data from uh, uh the nfhs that is a national family health survey uh their fourth data indicates that diphtheria vaccine is 78.4% uh covering vaccine okay so despite being operational for many years uip it is uh, it can it could only you know uh, cover 65% of the children in the first year of their life that is uh, quite uh, disappointing right so mission indra dhanush it is again to strengthen and reenergize the program so uh, and they uh, they plan to achieve full immunization coverage for every children under the age of 2 years and also the pregnant women so the mission indra dhanush they it was again come it, it again came under ministry of health and family welfare and this started in 2014 so what they try to do is they try to accelerate the process of immunization uh by covering 5% and more children every year so every year they they focus to cover more children uh, under this program so initially there was only seven diseases been targeted that is diphtheria whooping cough tetanus uh, poliomyelitis then tuberculosis measles and hepatitis b in addition to these vaccines for japanese encephalitis and hemo uh, hemophilus influenza type b was also been given in selected states not every state whichever state is having a, a problem of that particular disease and in 2016 uh, again uh, the rubella uh, japanese uh, Jap uh, japanese encephalitis and injectable polio vaccine that is uh, ipv bivalent and rotavirus were added and in 2017 uh the pneumonia uh, was added to the uh, mission okay uh, incorporating this new uh, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine after uh, uh, sorry under uh, uip okay so there is one more thing called as intensified mission indradhanush uh this is also a special drive they focus uh, on again complete immunization coverage in selected district some district and some cities are you know more affected by diseases so such cities are been concentrated so mission indradhanush is a pan india uh, scheme and intensified mission indradhanush focus on selected districts and cities to ensure full immunization to more than 90% by 2018 so the achievement of full immunization under this program uh, should be at least 90% of the covered by 2020 that is what is decided now so with the launch of uh, this intensified mission uh, indradhanush uh the target have uh, now be advanced okay so next is map aided program in map aided program we are continuing with the ramsar wetlands so today i am covering the ramsar wetland of uttar pradesh that is upper ganga river uh it extends from bridgegut to narora stretch okay so this upper ganga river it's a uh, it's a shallow river stretch it's a part of ganga it's a the starting of ganga 
so it has many deep water pools and reservoirs. Uh, it is coming from the upstream. So, the, it is basically the Ganga's upstream and the river it, uh, it is uh, uh, providing habitat for many IUC and red listed animals like uh, uh, Gangetic river dolphin, gharial, crocodile, turtles, otters. Okay, so many, many species of fishes and many species of birds have been found here. So, this river it is, it is uh, very prominent because it is uh, important uh, on the basis of Hindu religion. It is very important because thousands of pilgrims use this place. They come uh, uh, considering this as a holy place. Uh, they use uh, this place for cremation and the holy baths for spiritual purification. So, this Upper Ganga river is very important in Hindu religion. Major threats this region face is uh, sewage discharge, agricultural runoff and intensive fishing. Okay. So, the conservation activities are majorly uh, taking place here is planting of more trees uh, to prevent the bank erosion and uh, uh, training the people on organic farming to, to reduce the agricultural runoff and also lobbying to ban commercial fishing. So, subsistence fishing is okay in this region but commercial fishing is somewhat very dangerous. Okay. So, I have a picture also. So, this they uh, in this picture you can also see the Ramsar wetlands of uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, of Punjab, of Himachal Pradesh and uh, of Rajasthan as well. So, I have marked Upper Ganga River, please go through it. Coming to the previous year question revision series, explained um, the eastward flow of equatorial counter currents. So, the options are earth's rotation on its axis, convergence of two equatorial currents, Difference in salinity of water, occurrence of belt of calm near the equator. So, uh, in this, this is a very factual question. You cannot simply guess this question. If you know it, you will know the answer. Otherwise, uh, if you don't know it, I'll prefer you leave this question because the answer is B, convergence of two equatorial currents. Okay, so uh, Earth's rotation on its axis is, uh, is uh, you know, the reason for creation of equatorial current but the counter current is because of the convergence and difference in salinity cannot create a, a counter current. Occurrence of a belt of calm is also not the, the right explanation because it is it's not the belt of calm. Okay, so that option is anyway wrong. So, the right answer is B or convergence of two equatorial currents. Okay, so that is all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. If you have any doubts, please let me know. Thank you so much. Good night.